hallelujah this morning, the Most High. We get up to say Shema, Israel, Adonai, Eloheinu, Adonai, Akha. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Blessed be the name of his glorious kingdom forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah and bless your name. Hallelujah, hallelujah, this morning the most high God. 
I don't know about anybody else, but I was waking up all night long, every hour on the hour, in expectation. That's the way we need to wake up every single day. We need to wake up in expectation because the word of the Most High God says, Now unto him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above what I thought or even asked for. So as I understand my potential, I got to walk in expectation. I got to live in expectation because I know when man things might be impossible, but with the most high God, all things are possible. And guess what? All things work together for them who love the Lord and that are called according to his purpose. Hallelujah. And bless your name. Many are called but few are chosen. And when you understand your potential, knowing that you have been chosen, you begin to walk in expectation. You begin to walk out of darkness into his marvelous light. You begin to understand that you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. Because guess what? He's the author and finisher of your faith. He knows right now every hair that's numbered on your head. He, your name is graven in his hands. Hallelujah. He's the one who said, greater work shall you do. So you got to walk in expectation. It's not about the limitations that you put on yourself. The most high God says, greater works shall you do. So I woke up every hour on the hour in expectation of a word from the most high God because I know heaven and earth shall pass away but his word shall stand forever and I stand on his word from Genesis to Revelations so I know right now I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me because I know when I am weak he is strong I know that the joy of the Lord is my strength and he has given me joy unspeakable joy hallelujah and bless your name and when you begin to understand that you begin to truly walk in expectation you're not worried about tomorrow because he said don't worry about tomorrow he didn't give us a spirit of fear but power in love and a sound mind come on now and if the most high God before us, then who can be against us? Who can stand against the great I am, the Avatar, the first and the last, the beginning and the end, the one that's the same today, yesterday, and forevermore? Who can stand against the great I am? He said, I am that I am. What you say? He said that I am that I am. So who can stand against the great I am? Ooh, we serve an omnipotent God, an omnipresent God. We serve a God of favor. We serve a God of grace and mercy. We serve a living God. Hallelujah. And bless your name. So when you know that, you walk in expectation of what he's going to do in your life. You're not worried about a job. You're not worried about your finances. You're not a worried about anything that this world can bring against you. Because you know that the most high God has already overcame the world. I'm more than an overcomer. I'm more than a conqueror. And I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. Y'all better come on and understand your potential. When you understand your potential, guess what? You begin to walk in the confidence of the most high God. Oh, yes, you begin to get some confidence when you walk and understand your potential. Yeah. And especially when you know that when he created what? Plants, he spoke to the soil. Yeah. When he created fish. He spoke to the water, the dirt. But when he created you and me, he spoke to himself. Let us make man in our own image and our likeness. Come on and wake up this morning. Wake up in expectation with me. Come on now. We don't wrestle against flesh and blood. <laughs> we don't wrestle against flesh and blood. We got principles over principalities. We got the keys of the kingdom to bind and loose. We got the keys of the kingdom 
to bind and loose. Therefore, we do not walk in a spirit of fear. But power and love in a sound mind. I don't know about anybody else. You got to learn how to overcome some things in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach. You can't have a spirit of fear. Fear is not even in our DNA. We're not even made that way. So when you understand your potential, you begin to talk to everything because you have dominion to rule and reign. Everything in your body has to line up when you know you are a kingdom citizen. When you know that you are a citizen of the most high God, you begin to speak like a king because you know that the power of life and death is in your tongue and you better speak life at all times because when a king speaks, a king creates laws. Hallelujah. And everything that the most high God does, he does it by his laws. So you better open up your mouth and begin to speak the king's language. What did the king say about you? Oh, I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Great Greater is he that is in me than he that was ever in this world. I'm more than an overcomer, more than a conqueror. A thousand may fall at my right side, ten thousand at my left. But nine shall come near me. And when the enemy comes in like a flood, my God shall lift up a standard against him. Yea, though I walk. Through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil because the most high God is with me. Hallelujah and bless your name, Lord. Yes, yes. Something about understanding your potential. What, what you say fear? What is that? Uh, we ain't even made that way. Hallelujah and bless your name. The enemy wants you afraid of some things. You better tell the devil he's a liar. He told the very first lie. Actually, he's the father of lies. Don't let him lie to you and plant things in your mind. You better cast down vain imaginations that exalt itself against the knowledge of what the most high God said in his word. He's the same today, yesterday, and forevermore. I dare you to walk in the principles of the most high God. It will give you strength like never before. It'll tell you like Moses when he would walk into the land to take over whatever ike was in the land he would say Lord rise up let my enemies be scared come on understand it through all your getting <laughs> get an understanding come on and understand your potential we've been walking in defeat for too long we've been walking in depression for too long We've been walking in a spirit of low self-esteem for too long. We've been walking in a low self-value of ourselves for too long. We've been looking at ourselves in the mirror as we can't do some things in our lives. Come on now, you got to understand your potential. Yes, yes. That when he created me and you, he spoke to himself. Let that right there. Meditate on that. He spoke to himself. Yeah. When he created you and I, he spoke to himself. Ooh. Oh, he was thinking about some good things. He said, very good, Dr. J, when he spoke about me. He said, very good. So I'm thankful this morning that he has the power, but he has given me the authority. The enemy is under my feet. Hallelujah. The most high God promised me some things. I can't sit down now. The most high God promised me some things. I can't stop pressing now. The most high God promised me some things. I can't stop getting up. And I won't give up. Because he promised me some things. Oh, I'm victorious. You didn't know. Oh, this is what victory looked like. You didn't know victory looked like this. Oh, victory looked just like this. This, this is what victory looked like. You got to tell yourself. Speak to yourself. You got to speak those things. As though they are. 
not that you don't speak what's not now. You got to speak what it is now. Shoot, if, even if you don't see it, you got to say, look, I got more than enough because I serve the most high Jireh. He shall supply all my needs according to his riches and glory. Guess what? I'm like David. My cup is running over. Welcome to the overflow where you begin to understand your potential. Guess what? You got more than enough. He said, I'll open up the windows of heaven for you, Dr. J, and pour you out a blessing that you don't have room to receive. Oh, I got more than enough. I can't even receive all that blessing that are coming my way because they're chasing me and pursuing me and running me down. I don't know about nobody else. I got more than enough. When you begin to walk in the kingdom, you have more than enough. Come on now. He is the most high gyra. He shall supply all your needs according to his riches and glory. He said, if you seek me first, the kingdom of the most high God, and all his righteousness, all things should be added unto you. Are you seeking to live a kingdom lifestyle? Oh, it's about a king and a kingdom. Y'all didn't know that Bible was about a king and a kingdom? Why does it say the King James Version? Why does it say the New Covenant? And why does it say the Old Testament and the New Testament? Do you know what a testament is? That's kingdom language. When he says, by now, you should be teachers, but some of us need to go back to the first oracles of God. What are the oracles found at? See, you got to get your strength back. Yeah. You got to go back to the old landmark. <laughs> you got to understand Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy, where he laid out the foundation of the earth. Yeah. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. You got to go back to creation. I'm so excited about this word this morning. I'm so excited about this word. I'm telling you, this is an empowerment word. Right now, we're doing this leadership conference on understanding your potential. This is an empowering word. It will empower you. To tell the enemy, oh, you're going to have to get behind me, Satan. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, I'm the head and not to tell you to know. I'm above and not beneath. I'm a lender, not a borrower. I don't know who you're talking to, but I'm above. Never beneath. Oh, you under my feet. Mm -hmm. I got dominion to rule and reign in the earth realm. That's some expectation right there, y'all. I woke up with expectation. I was like, woo, you waking up on every hour on an hour. This word must going to be off the chain this morning. You woke up at 1 o'clock. All right, most high God. Come on, let's go. You woke up at 2 o'clock. All right, let's go. 3 o'clock. I woke up on every hour on the hour. He said, ooh, can you just pray for just one hour? I said, I could pray all day at 9, 12, and 3 because I know who you are. You are a rewarder to them. That diligently seek you, and I was seeking you every hour on the hour. For a word. For the 12 tribes of Israel. I'm searching for a word, not just for me. A word that's going to unlock everything in your life. Because you need some keys. He didn't have given us 613 keys, and we don't know how to use them. The word says my people are destroyed from lack of knowledge. We don't have the information to unlock some things in our life. We don't have the teachings and instructions to unlock some things in our life. So we stay bound. And the most high God said, uh-uh, loose that woman, loose that man, set him free right now. Loose that woman, that man, and set him free. We will not be bound by the lies of the enemy. We are no longer ignorant. Sorry, Hasatan. You can't keep us that way no more. We are no longer ignorant of Hasatan devices. Now you come on and wake up and stay awake. Our problem is we wake up to the knowledge and understanding of the word of the Most High God, but we don't want to go to the wisdom. And he's telling you if any man want wisdom, let him ask for it. We don't want to go to the wisdom part and begin to walk in wisdom and apply these keys. 613 keys. I'm like, wow. So you mean to tell me I got something that will sustain me to keep me and help me to walk in the way that I need? Yes. Yes, yes. Your source, your creator, the manufacturer has built some things on the inside of you. Yeah. 613 keys. Oh my goodness. And we don't even use one of them. We don't even use one. They said if you would apply one principle, oh my goodness, you will see a change in your life. 
If we did one. Our problem is we're so busy like, ooh, 613, oh, Lord. That's a whole lot of principle. How about you just start out with one? And, and you'll find out that one is wrapped into two. Ooh, Lord. Because he said, all the commandments hang on this. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your might. And love your neighbor as yourself. When you understand your potential, you ain't worried about the enemy. Come on now. You loving the enemy as yourself. You praying like never before. You're standing on this word. Our problem is we can't walk out forgiveness. And like I said before, do you know unforgiveness locks up heaven? You praying for this and you praying for that, but you have an unforgiving spirit. So the most like I said, I don't hear you. I, I don't hear nothing you got to say. Go get that right with your brother. Then come back and talk to me. Go and get that right now. And I don't even want your, I don't even want your offering. Don't even bring that to the altar. Go get that right with your brother and then come talk to me. He been walking around here all messed up, all jacked up. Cause guess what? They got an unforgiving heart. You got to forgive. And forgive, and forgive, and forgive, and what? And forgive. 70 times 7, that's what he said. Okay, now, he done messed up all this time. You know, I, I would have been that same brother standing there with Yeshua, like, come on, Yeshua. Now, he keep doing the same old thing over and over and over again. And Yeshua said, okay. So, what you want me to do? I, I want you to answer the question. How many times should I forget this fool? Did you just say fool? Yeah. Keep doing the same thing over and over. That's a fool. Come on now. Oh, he insane. He crazy. They say the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result. It ain't going to change crazy person. Wow. Hello, somebody. So I would have been that one standing there saying, how many more times? Because I'm about to. And he going to turn around and say, 70 times 7. How much is that, Yeshua? Because I'm trying to count that. <laughs> Lord, that's our problem. We don't get that. We got to forgive folks over and over and over and over and and over and over and over. Once you get that thing down, I got that principle right there. Because some folks be like, girl, the way you be walking with people, they be like, girl, no, they did all that. You still like, yeah, child. I'll do that for you and I'll do that too. But that's why I walk in the blessings and not the curses. Because I'm obedient to that forgiveness thing. Ooh, we, I can forgive you. I'm obedient, obedient to that forgiveness thing. You got to forgive. Period. Period. You have to forgive. Ooh, y'all in expectation of this word that's coming forth this morning? I'm in expectation. Because, see, I have to understand my prince potential. Therefore, I can maximize it. I want to take that thing to a whole different dimension. I want to live in the spirit since he blew his spirit inside of me and I became a living soul. Oh, I already know I have access because guess what? I got this dirt body. This is the only thing legal in the earth realm. I'm legal. I'm legal. I'm a law abiding citizen. I'm legal. And you put that spirit, I tap into that spirit. Ooh, boy, I could do all things through the most high God who strengthens me. You better come on now. I'm a force to be reckoned with. What you say? You heard what I said. I'm understanding my potential. I'm a force to be reckoned with. Ooh, Lord. All right now. Hallelujah. We came from Biloxi, Mississippi, baby, with some fire because we had to press through in Biloxi. Leave it up out of here. Oh, honey, that blizzard had us turned around. Oh, my goodness, on the highway. We had to press through in order to get to Biloxi, Mississippi. I said to myself, ain't no stopping us now. We on the move. What you say? Ain't no stopping us now. We on the move. Come on now. Come on now. We done finally got ourselves together. We done polished up our act. Come on now. All right. We're pressing towards the mark. Yes. I don't know if anybody could press sometimes like we were pressing. We're pressing towards the mark. Yes. Of the higher calling of Yeshua HaMashiach. We pressing towards that mark. Come on now, this race ain't given to the swift. Come on now, and if you tired, you got to get out of here. This race ain't given to the swift, but to he that endures to the end. When you understand your potential, you got to have some endurance. Yes. You got to pull on the inside. You can't let this old body talk about I'm tired. Come on now. You got to strengthen yourself. Oh, Lord. Come on now and run this race. Come on now. 
I got to be like Paul. I finished my course. You ain't going to get me to a place where, you know, I just got kind of got tired and sat down and I, I figured that was enough. You know, I had did that thing for 10 years, child. I just, I, I retired. <laughs> you can't retire from the assignment. Because you are not the assigner. Ooh, what you say? You can't retire from the assignment. Because you are not the assigner. Only the creator tell you when to quit. He ain't said it's time to quit yet. He, time, he said, hey, I need you to run this race that's set before you. Come on now. I need you to run this race that's set before you. This race ain't given to the swift. Y'all, Some of y'all be like, oh, Lord, I wish it was over. Oh, just, you know, I just, uh, just hot. <laughs> I found myself saying that, that I just hot. Most of our guys said, great. Now let your endurance kick in because that's your potential. What? And endurance begin to kick in. And I begin to stand up and do things that I thought I could not do because this body was tired. But the endurance on the inside of me said I could do all the things. What you say? Yeah, yeah. The endurance starts speaking to me. I can do all things through Christ. Who strengthens me? Come on, endurance. Kick in. Kick in. I can do all things through Christ. Who strengthens me? I miss y'all. Come on in here, Miss Evelyn. Come on, Mary, Mother, Mr. Brown. I miss you guys. So glad I got folks I can stand with. Ooh, you better come into agreement. You better shut your mouth. If two or three gather together in his name, he in the midst. And if two touch and agree on anything, it shall be done. And unity is where he commands the blessing. Come on, community, and stand up this morning and know right now, no good thing is going to be withheld from you. When you understand your potential. All right now. I'm so excited. I don't know what to do. It's the fourth day. And I got a fourth man in the fire. Come on now. It's the fourth day. And I got a fourth man in the fire. Come on in here, April. Understand your potential. And as we're understanding our potential, guess what we're coming up on? We're coming up on Purim. What you say? Yes, we are. We're coming up on Purim. March the 19th and the 20th, Sunday or March 19th. Come on, we're coming up on Purim. Then we're coming up on Passover. Come on now, we ain't got no time to not understand our potential. Right. Esther was like, I was called for such a time as this, baby. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm going to have to go before that king. Yes, I am. When you understand your potential... You will go before the king. Talking about king. Mm -mm. They trying to annihilate my people. I wish they would. Come on now. Sometimes he has to hide you. For such a time as this. Come on Purim. Come on Purim. Sometimes he has to hide you. For such a time as this. Ooh! And when you understand your potential. You be like. Oh greater is he that is in me. Than he that was ever in this world. Call me Esther. Hallelujah. Bless your name. <coughs> Excuse me. Because sometimes you need somebody that's going to go in between and stand in the gap. So come on now. We get ready to go into Purim, y'all. And I'm excited about it. Come on. Purim 5779. When I was thinking about Purim, right, I was thinking about, okay, you know, in the tabernacle, we got to start a whole new study, right? So I was like, so where we going to go, Most High? He said, well, first of all, there's always an enemy. And sometimes I'll place them right inside the camp. Huh? Yeah. <clears throat> there's always an enemy. And sometimes I'll place them inside the camp. And actually to plot against you. You know that kind of Haman spirit? If you notice right now, Haman is starting to hang around. What you say, Most High God? If you notice right now, this is a season of Haman. You know, you're going to have to play with Haman, but guess what? We're going to play Hangman. And in a minute, Haman going to hang himself. All right, Most High God. So I was thinking, okay, so where are we going with this? Yeah, we're going to um, start. Uh, I told you that 5779 is the year that you will see the snake in the grass. 
So whoever your enemies are, I'm exposing them anyway. So Haman might be plotting against you in this season. But guess what? I already told you who Haman was, right? So I got Esther hidden for such a time as this. And so you know two folks is getting together against you because they always come in pairs. They ain't coming by themselves. You know, Haman, you know, they ain't coming by themselves now. So all the two folks is rising up against you, which is Jezebel and Ahab. He says, so therefore, we going to unmask a spirit. Oh, Jezebel. Oh, Lord. We've done this book before, Most High God. We've done it like two times. Oh, but you don't understand. 5779 is the year that you will see the snake in the grass coming up on Purim where you got some hangmen hanging around plotting against you. I'm going to have to unmask the spirit of Jezebel for your discernment to kick in. Ooh, Ahab and Jezebel, you better watch out right now. Because the Most High God is going about to bring unmasking a spirit of Jezebel all over again. Oh, you don't have Jezebel without Ahab. See, the, the thing about Jezebel, you know she going to talk all this stuff. You know she going to be going off and stuff. She going to be going off. But Ahab going to be in the background like this. You think so? I really didn't see that at first. You think so? So, you know, Ahab is kind of like he don't say nothing, acting like he ain't in agreement, but he in agreement. He's in agreement. So I love it, love it, love it. When we first came into unmasking the spirit of Jezebel, first of all, Rabbi Ralph Messer taught it in the synagogue and 5 a.m. prayer said, uh-oh, we got to open up the entire book. Because if you don't know what you're dealing with, and right now you understand that your potential but you don't have discernment. How you going to maximize it? The most high God said, uh-uh, this got to work hand in hand. I, I, I'm teaching you how to, you know, look at yourself, how to actually overcome some things. And you don't understand the spirit of Jezebel. You don't understand that we're coming up on Purim where Haman is hanging around. He plotting against you. Wow. Folks is plotting against you. You didn't know that? And they be plotting against you, sitting right at the same table with you. But the most high God said, oh, I already prepared the table before you in the presence of your enemies. You didn't know. Tell them welcome to supper. <laughs> Tell them come on in here now. We got to wake up. We study scripture Hebraically. Therefore, we should know what season we're in. Purim is a season of folks plotting against you. You better see the plot, girl. Oh, the plot gets thicker. Uh, I thought that was it. Oh, no. You better open up your eyes and see. The plot is thickening. <clears throat> so your discernment going to need to kick in. Hallelujah. So I'm excited, excited, excited about a season of Purim. Because he didn't give me no spirit of fear. Who I'm scared of? Get out of here. He didn't give me no spirit of fear. But power in love. In a sound mind. Oh, Lord. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Get on out of here. I got 613 keys. I got 613 moves that I can make. I got messengers on assignment for me. Come on, Michael and War right now. They trying to plot. Come on, mm -hmm. Come on Raphael. Send healing. Yes. Gabriel, I already know you got the message that Purim's on the way. We can't get discouraged because folks going to plot against you. Hello, somebody. And then Uriel, light that thing up. What y'all say? Light it up, Uriel. Light it up. Yeah. It's going to be so powerful on 5 a.m. prayer. You do not want to miss a day of unmasking a spirit of Jezebel. Oh, Lord. In the teaching on Purim. Come on, Esther. Oh, we've been hidden for such a time as this. To take Torah to the tribes. The 12 tribes of Israel need to wake up. We got some Esthers that are hidden out there. Come on, April. Come on, Mary. Come on, Mother. Come on, Stacy. Come on, Evelyn. We got some Esthers that's going to rise up. Hallelujah. In a season of Haman. Ooh. 
Don't you love that you walk and study the Torah? Don't nothing sneak up on you, girl. You already know. It's a season. <laughs> I don't know when these feast days come, y'all. Come on now. It's a season. And we're going to roll straight into Passover. So I'm so glad that the Most High God gives us wisdom. That we will make the application and apply the word to our lives. Yes, yes. The Torah is light. Just in case you didn't know. It's light. It will light up any dark area in your life. It will bring you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Yes. The Torah is light. And right now, guess what? <clears throat> it's preparation time. Woo! You're being prepped. Just like Esther. Come on, Queen Esther. You're being prepped. It's preparation time. For what the Most High God has already prepared for you. But have, are you preparing yourself? Come on now. Esther had to be taught. Esther had to be groomed. Esther was this queen. Esther had to know. And then Esther always had to have somebody to encourage her like a Mordecai. You better know who the Mordecai is in your life. You better separate the two. Because it's a season of unwise association. You got Mordecai and you got Haman. You better know which one is encouraging you. One is plotting against you and the other is saying you were chosen for such a time as this. Haman is saying it ain't your season. It ain't your time. And I ain't can support that. Mordecai is saying, oh, you was born for such a time as this. Ooh, come on, Purim. Come on, Purim. Hallelujah. And bless your name. And it's funny how all these masks, you know, happen around this time of year. I mean, Mardi Gras is going on right now. They putting up their masks. And the most high guy said, "Ah, uh, uh unmask them. Unmask the spirit of Jezebel. Yes. Come on, Queen Esther. It's prep time. Preparation. Preparation. A lot of times the Most High God has already blessed us. And he cannot give us the blessing because we made no preparation for it. We're not prepared to handle it. We're not prepared to walk through it. We're not prepared for any of it. So that's the reason why the Most High has to send certain things into our lives. It's called preparation. And so when he is turning up your discernment, he's going to send a Haman and a Mordecai. What you say? He's going to send a Haman and a Mordecai to walk so close with you that you can recognize it. So he has to turn up your discernment in a season of Purim. Because Haman... Is plotting against you. And, and he ain't just plotting against you. He's plotting to kill you. And that's what you have to understand. There's a plot going on. Right. And, and you're going to have to have Uriel to light it up for real. You're going to have to him. He's going to have to turn these lights on for real. Because if we're not careful, we will be misled. And, and, and the word says the very elect will be deceived. The very elect will be deceived. Come on now. And we have to understand that coming up on the season of her. Ooh, I'm like this. Hang them high. Hang them high. That same rope that Haman was preparing to hang Mordecai. Ah, he hung on the same rope. My mother used to always say that that little ditch that you trying to dig for me. Go on, dig it real deep because you're going to fall in first. Right. <laughs> you will be falling in first. So y'all wake up. And realize what season you in. Because if you don't realize that it's a season of Purim that we're about to walk into, you keep saying to yourself, I don't know why this person is coming against me. And I don't know why this person is doing that. And I thought she was my friend. And I thought he was my friend. And I thought we were ministers together. You better recognize unwise association. For every two people that is assigned to walk with you, every one person that's assigned to walk with you, there's another person that's assigned to walk against you. And I think we forget that. People are on assignment. That's why you can't just be walking with everybody. 
And especially if they're not in the Torah, there should be no fellowship. I'm sorry, I'm keeping it 100 this morning. And you wondering why your stuff sometimes get clogged up, blocked up, all that. Because you asking folks to pray for you that don't even walk in the Torah. They can't pray for you. I look at folks that put out there, please pray. And then you see folks in there praying for you that's not in the Torah. Delete that prayer. Delete it. Right. Say nothing against you, but um, what does light have to do with darkness? I'm just saying. Right. What does light have to do with darkness? No, y'all better be careful who's praying for you. Right. If you are not in the Torah, you can't, you can't pray for me. I'm sorry. I don't care how big you are. I don't care what you got. I don't care none of that. If you are not in the Torah, you cannot pray for me. Because your prayers are hindered anyway. So don't waste your time and mine too. Thank you. All right now. So now. Oh Lord. I guess I got to pray first. I'm so excited. I don't know what to do. I told you I'm welcome in expectation. Oh, most high. Come on, Holy Ghost. I come lifting up everyone on Facebook Live this morning. Your word says that you will no longer have us ignorant of Hasatan devices coming up on a season of Purim. You said there's one assigned to walk with us and one assigned against us. So expose every Haman and Mordecai in our lives. Expose every Jezebel and Ahab. In our lives, as we are about to pass over, you better tell Pharaoh to let your people go. Hallelujah and bless your name. I'm excited in understanding our potential because you have the power, but you have given us the authority. And we know right now that we are fearfully and wonderfully made because you didn't give us a spirit of fear, but power in love. In a sound mind. And right now, and I ask you to decrease me. Like John said, come on, decrease me now. As you give the increase, pour into me right now. Open up the windows of heaven and pour me out a blessing that I don't have room to receive. When I open my mouth, you speak for me. Come on, Holy Spirit. Rise up. Because I know it's not by power nor by might. But it's by your spirit. And the Holy Spirit will lead and guide me into all truth on the fourth day. Come on, Yeshua. I got a fourth man in the fire. And I will forever give you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. And it's in the mighty, mighty name of Yeshua HaMashiach, I pray. Amen, 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 and amen. I don't know about anybody else. But it's preparation time, and I'm preparing myself to understand my potential. Ooh, Lord. Hallelujah. Kadosh. Kadosh, Kadosh. Come on in here, April. Kadosh. Kadosh, Kadosh. Holy, holy, holy. Ooh, Lord. Ooh, Lord. The word says, if two or three gather together in his name, that he would be in the midst. The word says, if two... Touch and agree on anything. It shall be done. And I know I can't do nothing this morning without this word being established through the law, the prophets, and the writings. So we got a method style to our study. And it's a process of studying the word of Ahia, Asha Ahia, which is I am. That I am in Hebrew, the great I am, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And we seek his guidance and live in a kingdom lifestyle. The Torah, God's teachings and instructions in 613 principles. It's where the creator speaks, mother. And then we search the witnesses through the books of the prophets, the never ends, and the books of the writings, the Ketavis, collectively the Torah, the never ends, and the Ketavis, or identified as the Tanakh, or as some refer to it, the Old Testament, which is the only book that Yeshua studied in reference throughout the New Testament. Ooh, Lord. Hallelujah. Fulfilled. Today we look to the word fulfill. Male, to be full, fullness, abundance, to be full, be accomplished. The Torah testifies. Exodus chapter 23, verse 26. There shall nothing cast their young, 
nor be buried in thy land. The numbers of thy days I will fulfill. Come on, most high God. The prophets proclaim. Second Samuel chapter 7 verse 12. And when the days be fulfilled and thou shalt sleep with thy fathers, I will set up thy seed after thee which shall proceed out of thy bowels and I will establish his kingdom. You better come on in here. The writings bear witness. First Kings chapter 8 verse 15. And he said, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, which spake with his mouth unto David my father, and has with his hand fulfilled it, saying. What'd he say? Speak, Lord. Your servant is listening. We have completed the method style of study this morning, reviewing fulfilled. First, we recognize the standard set and the Torah and 613 principles. Then we search the witnesses through the books of the prophets, the never ease, and the books of the writings, the Ketavis, collectively the Torah, the never ease, and the Ketavis, or identify as the Tanakh, or as some refer to it, the Old Testament, which is the only book that Yeshua studied and reference throughout the New Testament. 5 a.m. prayer. The Most High comes to make a demand on the potential that he has placed on the inside of us that we would operate as he intended and fulfill all that he has stored in us for his purpose to prevail. Psalm chapter 20 verse 4. Grant thee according to thy own heart and fulfill thy counsel. What you say? Psalm chapter 20 verse 14. Grant thee according to thy own heart and fulfill thy counsel. Shalom alakim. Peace be unto you 5 a.m. prayer community. He is teaching us who we are and how we are and how we were purposed and given potential to fulfill the assignment that he has placed on our lives. All right now. So now, are you ready? For the word of God, the father of Abraham, the father of Isaac, the father of Jacob. Come on in here, Holy Ghost. Are you ready for the word of God, the father of Abraham, the father of Isaac, the father of Jacob? This morning, we are coming out of the book of Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 3 in its entirety. Okay, this morning, we are coming out of the book of Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 3 in its entirety, and it reads, For this cause, I, Paul, the prisoner of Jesus Christ, for you Gentiles, if ye have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God, which is given me to towards you, how that by revelation he made known unto me the mystery, as I wrote afore in a few words, whereby when ye read, ye may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Mashiach, Christ, which in other ages were not made known unto the sons of men, as it is now revealed unto his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit, that the Gentiles, and Gentiles mean confused, pagan, and without God, so don't call yourself a Gentile, okay? Confused, pagan, and without God. That the Gentiles should be fellow heirs and of the same body and partakers of his promise and Mashiach Christ by the gospel. Whereof I was made a minister. What you say? <coughs> Excuse me. Whereof I was made a minister. According to the gift of the grace of God given unto me by the effectual working of his power. Unto me, who am less than the least of all saints, if is this grace given that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Mashiach Christ and to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery? 
which from the beginning of the world has been hid in God, who created all things by Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ, to the intent that now unto the principalities and powers in heavenly places might be known by the church, the manful wisdom of the most high God. According to the eternal purpose, which he purposed in Christ Jesus, our Lord, in whom we have boldness and access with confidence by the faith of him. Wherefore, I desire that ye faint not at my tribulations for you, which is for your glory. For this cause, I bow my knees unto Abba of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with, with might by his spirit in the inward man. Ooh, understand your potential. That Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith that ye being rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the beaded in length and depth and height and to know the love of Mashiach, which passes knowledge that ye might be filled with all the fullness of the Most High God. Now unto him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask all things according to the power that worketh in us. Yes, yes. I woke up with that in my spirit. Unto him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages, world without end. Amen, 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 and amen. Oh, Lord, it's going to be like that. Mm -hmm, it's going to be just like that. All right, now. Chapter 11, keys to fulfilling your true potential. What you say? I just got finished talking about 613 keys, and I just got finished talking about now unto him. I woke up in expectation one, two, three. Come on, most high God. Yes, yes. On the fourth day. Calm me down now. Calm me down. Okay. Keys to fulfilling oh, Lord. your true potential. What you say? You gonna give me some keys? Uh huh. Keys to fulfilling your true potential. What lies beneath us and what lies before us are tiny matters compared to what lies within us. What you say, April? What lies behind us and what lies before us? Or tiny matters compared to what lies within us. No longer on tablets of stone, but on tablets of flesh. 613 principles. I'm going to say it again. His Torah is written on our minds and on our hearts. Therefore, what lies behind us and what lies before us are tiny matters compared to what lies within us. Oh, Lord. Oliver Wendell Holmes. Now to him. Oh, Lord. Now to him is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine according to his power that is at work within us. Come on, Apostle Paul and Ephesians chapter 3 verse 20. Do you read manuals? Come on now. Do you read manuals? Come on now because the Torah is a manual of teachings and instructions that needs to be read because any manufacturer of a piece of equipment, a refrigerator, a microwave, a television, a toaster, a sewing machine, a washing machine gives you a manual when you buy their product. And the most high God, when he made you, he spoke to himself and you came with a manual called the Torah, his teachings and instructions. When you open the manual, come on, most high when you open the manual, the first thing you read is, before plugging in this product, read this manual carefully. 
when you open the Torah, the Torah says before you operate in the realm of death, open up the manual because I came that you should have life and that you should have life more abundantly. I lay before you life and death. Choose life. The Torah is the instruction manual. You got to read it first before plugging into it. Hallelujah and bless your name before plugging in this product. Hallelujah. Read this manual carefully. But most of us don't. Right? I don't know. Hallelujah. Then if you turn to the first page of Genesis chapter 1 and understanding your potential. He made man in his own image. So when you open up the manual, you'll find a description of the product. Hallelujah. Let us make man in our image. You'll find a description of the product. When he spoke to man, he spoke to himself and often a picture as well. Oh Lord, you're fearfully and wonderfully made. Describing the very parts and what they can do. You can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. The next page usually tells you what you can expect from the product. What you say? The next page usually tells you what you can expect from the product. Finally, they tell you if something goes wrong with this product, do not fix it yourself. What you say? Finally, if they tell you if something goes wrong with this product, do not fix it yourself. Take it to a qualified technician who has the certifications from this manufacturer to fix it. Come on now. The problem is we walk in the realm of death. So we had to be taken to our source, which is the manufacturer, so he could fix us and let us know I wrote my Torah on your heart and on your mind. Therefore, there's nothing that you can't do. I'm certified. I'm the master teacher. I'm the I am. I'm the great I am. I'm the Alata. I'm the first and the last. I'm the same today, yesterday, and forevermore. So you got to take it back to the original source. Hallelujah and bless your name. If you don't, the warranty on this product is null and void. Our problem is we got so far away from the Torah, we walk into the realm of death. And guess what? We're null and void. Hallelujah and bless your name. If you want a piece of equipment to operate at its maximum potential. You have to follow the manufacturer instructions. What you say if you want your life to operate properly. You got to operate in the Torah. So therefore, if you want a piece of equipment to operate at its maximum potential. You have to follow the manufacturer's instructions. If you don't follow the Torah, his teachings and instructions, you may damage the product or at least you will know what you can expect from it. What you say? Or at least you will know what to expect from it. Only if you follow the instructions. Can you expect the product to meet the demand specified by the manufacturer? Only if you follow the Torah, God's teachings and instructions, can you expect the product to meet the demands specified by the manufacturer? Demands that equals what the manufacturer designed and built into the product. Oh, Lord. <clears throat> I see why I kept waking up at 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock. Because I was in expectation. I wanted to know what the manufacturer designed and built into this product. Yes, yes. The Most High's Instruction Manual. 
What you say? The most high's instruction manual called the Torah. God's teachings and instructions. We are excellent, complexly designed, tremendously built, intrinsically put together pieces of equipment. What you say, April? We are excellent, complexly designed, tremendously built. I'm going to skip over all that. We are fearfully and wonderfully made. But we don't know what we can do. We can't even imagine the full extent of our potential. Knowing this, the Most High sent us a manual that contains a description of our parts. The Most High sent his Torah that contains a description of our parts, his teachings and instructions. He said, now this first part is your spirit. And the second part is your soul. And the third part is your body. What you say, Most High? He said, now this first part is your spirit. And the second part is your soul. And the third part is your body. Now here is what the body is supposed to do. Here is what the soul can do. Here is what the spirit can do. The Most High also tells us the potential of this equipment called human beings in his manual, his Torah, his teachings and instructions. He lists all 613 principles, things we are capable of doing. What you say? Hallelujah and bless your name. Hallelujah and bless your name, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah and bless your name this morning. Hallelujah, hallelujah and bless your name this morning. When the Most High first presented. This piece of, 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 of equipment called man, something went wrong. What you say? When the Most High first presented this piece of equipment called man, something went wrong. Instead of taking it back to the manufacturer to be fixed, we took it to a second rate, second class unskilled technician. We took it to religion. We took it to the traditions of men. We took it to the dogmas of men. And they were unskilled technicians. They couldn't teach the word of the Most High God. The Apostle Paul said, by now you should be teachers. But some of you need to go back to the first oracles of the Most High God and teach his Torah from the beginning. And look what he did. He muzzled the job. What you say? And look what he did. He muzzled the job. We submitted the most high's equipment and product to Hasatan, who is an unauthorized dealer with no genuine parts. But the most high loved us so much that even though the warranty had ran out, he decided to take back the product. What you say? But the most high loved us so much even though the warranty ran out he decided to take back the product though someone else has tried to fix us and has messed us up the church has tried to fix us but they threw out the law the Torah his teachings and instruction therefore they have messed us up the most high is starting all over again and he is putting his own parts and he is putting in his own parts his Torah no longer on tablets of stone but on tablets of flesh so the most high is starting all over again and he's putting in his own parts the most high is rebuilding and re remaking us he knows us better than anyone else because he is our creator his word the bible reveals much about his attitude towards our potential hallelujah and bless your name the most high's word on your potential the most high's word on your potential you have the potential to be in the most high's class so the most high created man in his own image in the image of the most high he 
created him male and female. He created them. Genesis chapter 1 verse 27. The Most High sees you as being in his class. Because he made you in his image, you have the potential to be in the Most High class which is spirit. You have the potential to operate like the Most High. Then the Most High said, let us make man in our image and our likeness. Genesis chapter 1 verse 26. When the Most High made you in his likeness, he did not make you look like him. He made you to function like him. What you say when the Most High God made you in his image, he did not make you to look like him. He made you to function like him. Hallelujah and bless your name. The problem is when we threw out the Torah, we became dysfunctional. We couldn't function no more. So he made us in his image and his likeness, but not to look like him, to function like him. That's what likeness literally means. And the Torah causes you to function. Yes, yes. Woo. When the Most High created you, he made you to operate like him. If you are not functioning like the Most High, you are malfunctioning because the Most High wired and designed you to function like Him. How does the Most High function? His word says without faith, without faith, and in faith in Hebrew means obedience. Without obedience, it is impossible to please the Most High God. I'm going to say it again. Faith does not mean believe. Faith does not mean believe. Hallelujah. Because you can believe something and not do it. Faith means obedience. Believe all you want to. But will you be obedient to the most high God's word? I can believe something and not do it. Obedience. That's faith in Hebrew. So how does the most high function? His word says, without faith, it is impossible to please the most high. In Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6, the most high functions by faith, which is obedience to his instructions found in the Torah, the owner, owner's manual for your life. What you say? The most high function by faith, which is obedience to his instructions found in the Torah, the owner's manual for your life. You and I were designed to operate by following the proper procedures for living according to the kingdom of the most high. Our potential, therefore, needs obedience, his instructions in order to be maximized. You better write this thing, girl. Our potential, therefore, needs obedience to his instructions in order to be maximized. The most high sees in you the potential to dominate, rule, and subdue the whole earth. The most high said, let them rule over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, over the livestock, over all the earth, and over all the creatures that move along the ground. The most high blessed them and said to them, rule over the fish of the sea and the birds of the air and over every living creature that moves on the ground. Genesis chapter 1 verse 26 and 28. The Most High created you to rule over all the earth and everything that creeps in it. He will never demand anything of you. He didn't already build into you. Right. Thus, if the earth in any way is dominating you, you are malfunctioning. Come on, Torah. Come on, Torah. God's teachings and instructions. Thus, if the earth in any way is dominating you, you are malfunctioning. <coughs> Excuse me. You were not created to give into cigarettes or submit to alcohol. The Most High did not intend for you 
to be controlled by drugs, sex, money, power, or greed. If any of these are governing you, you are living below your privilege because the Most High has already declared it to be. You have the ability to dominate the earth. Everything in the earth must be under your subjection, not mastering you. Everything in the earth must be under your subjection, not mastering you. You have the ability to be fruitful and reproduce after your kind. The most high bless them and say, be fruitful and increase in number. Fill the earth and subdue it. Genesis chapter 20, chapter 1, verse 28. Again, the most high is calling for something that's already in you. Again, the most high is calling for something that is already in you. He didn't tell the man and the woman to try to be fruitful. He simply told them to do it. He knew they already had the ability to multiply and reproduce and fill the earth. You too can reproduce yourself. He also places the potential inside before he calls it forth. What you say? He always places the potential inside before he calls it forth. Whatever the most high calls you to do, he has already built in. You have the ability to imagine and plan to do anything. The Lord said, if as one people speaking the same language, they have begun to do this, then nothing they plan to do will be impossible for them. I dare you to speak the language of the Hebrew man. Come on, most high God. The Lord said, if as one people speaking the same language, they have begun to do this, then nothing they plan to do will be impossible for them. Oh Lord. Genesis chapter 11, verse 6. The Most High gave you the ability to imagine and plan and bring into being anything you desire. Now, if you read this passage in its entirety, the people to whom the Most High was talking had planned to build a tower. The Most High didn't stop them from building a tower by cutting off their potential. He stopped them by confusing their language what you say he stopped them by confusing their language because he couldn't stop their potential what you say because he couldn't stop their potential you have the same potential the most high saw in those people if you decide to do something and you believe in it hard enough and commit yourself to work for it long enough nothing in the universe I'm gonna say it again nothing in the universe can stop you. That's what the Most High is saying. If you want to do anything, the Most High said you can do it. Only if you lack the commitment to follow after your dream will your dream remain unfinished. The potential to do and plan anything is in you if you will believe and persevere. You have the potential to believe in impossibilities into possibilities. You have the potential to believe in possibilities and to possibilities. Everything is possible for him whom believe. Mark chapter 9 verse 23. Not only are you able to plan, but you are, but you also have the ability to believe something that seems impossible and actually make it possible. What you say? If you can abandon yourself, I'm going to say it again. If you can abandon yourself, I'm going to say it again. If you can abandon yourself to an idea and sacrifice all you have for that idea that the most high, then the most high says it's possible for that idea to come to pass. You have the potential to influence physical and spiritual matters. I will give you the keys. What you say? 
you have the potential to influence physical and spiritual matters. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on the earth will be bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on the earth will be loose in heaven. Matthew chapter 16 verse 19. Yeshua is talking here about your power to influence what's on the earth as well as what is in heaven. What you say most high? Yeshua is here. Yeshua is talking here about your power to influence what's on the earth as well as what's in heaven. If you bind something on earth, it will be bound in heaven. You have influence in heaven. Likewise, if you lose something on the earth, heaven has to do the same thing. Lose it. What you say? Likewise, if you lose something on the earth, heaven has to do the same thing, lose it. You have the power to influence things in both realms of earth and heaven. You may never have imagined that you possess that kind of power. You may have never imagined that you possess that kind of power, but Yeshua says you do. You have the potential to receive whatever you ask. If you remain in me and my my words remain in you. Ask whatever you wish and it will be given to you. John chapter 15 verse 7. The Most High says you have the potential to receive whatever you ask. That's frightening. What you say? The Most High says you have the potential to receive whatever you ask. That's frightening. You have a blank check. But there is one condition on the cash on cashing that check, you must abide in Mashiach, and his words must abide in you. What you say, you have a blank check, but there is one condition on cashing of that check. You must abide in Mashiach, and his words abide in you. If that condition is met, you can ask anything in Yeshua's name, and it will be done for you. Yeshua wants to knock the limits off of your mind. Yeshua wants to knock the limits off of your mind. But first, he requires that you stay hooked up with the Most High. Then he says, go ahead and ask for anything. Then he says, go ahead, ask for anything. I'll do whatever you ask. What potential? That's the most high's word on you. Stop saying things about yourself that the most high did not say. He's coming this morning, Yeshua, as the fourth man in the fire to knock the limits off of you. You have the potential to do greater works than Yeshua did. You have the potential to do greater works than Yeshua did. I tell you the truth. Anyone who has faith in me will do what I have been doing. He will do even greater things than these. Because I am going to the Father in John chapter 14 verse 12. Yeshua sees in you the potential to do greater things than he did. And he means what he says. For many years, I didn't want to read that scripture. Because I knew that what Yeshua said and what was really happening were two different things. But if Yeshua says you have that potential, it's in there somewhere. But 
If Yeshua says you have that potential, it's in there somewhere. Remember, whatever the Most High says you can do, he won't ask you to do anything he hasn't already wired you to do. The Most High believes in you. He knows the vastness of your potential. If he gives you an assignment, he has already given you the ability to fulfill what he acts along with his demand always come the capability to meet that demand but remember to release your potential you must be related to the source the Torah only as you are connected to the most high can you fulfill and maximize your true potential say yes to Yeshua say yes to Yeshua sin or rebellion against the most high clogs up potential Potential. Disobedience to the Most High may have stunt your capability for growth, but the Most High sees and cares about that problem. He sent Yeshua into the world to die for you. Yeshua doesn't have a problem knowing who he is and what he can do. You have that problem. Yeshua came to die so you can know who you are and what is the fullness of your potential. He came to open up the capacity of who you are to unclog your true self. Calvary is the most high's way of providing the means to unplug your true potential because disobedience has capped off your potential. Because disobedience has capped off your potential. The most high offers you forgiveness and hope through Yeshua HaMashiach in your plugged up state. What you say? In your plugged up state, you can't begin to touch your true ability. Only after you say yes to the Torah, Yeshua in your spirit begins to communicate and fellowship again with the Holy Spirit. Can you start the journey of fulfilling all the potential, the most high planet within you before you was born? It's my earnest desire that you will realize the awesome wealth of of your potential residing on the inside of you. But more important than this potential is the necessity that you understand your need for a personal relationship with your creator through the agency he has provided Yeshua HaMashiach. Ten keys to releasing your potential. Ten keys to releasing your potential. At this point, you must be aware of the tremendous wealth locked away inside of you crying out for exposure and fulfillment. I believe you have heard the voices of a young childhood dream and the many visions, goals, and plans you once had screaming out for a resurrection. Now, the big question remains, how do I release this potential? Now, the big question remains, how do I release this potential? Every manufacturer establishes pacifications, environments, conditions and operational standards for obtaining the maximum performance level of his product. The Most High, our creator and manufacturer has also established a plan, environment, condition, standards, specification for maximum performance and release of your potential. After many years of careful study and practice, I have identified 10 major keys to releasing your potential. Violation of any one of these requirements will result in malfunction, distortion, misuse, abuse of your precious potential. The keys to releasing your potential. Hallelujah. Key number one, you must know, be related to your source. It is essential that you understand the nature, composition, and consistency of your source because this is the key to understanding the potency of your potential. If you, for example, had a wooden table in your house, 
you would be aware that the table is made of wood from a tree. The strength durability and nature of the table can only be as strong and durable as the tree. If the tree is weak, the table will be the same. Therefore, the potential of the table is determined by the potential of the source from which it came. The same is true to you. Yes, yes. <coughs> Excuse me. The same is true to you to understand how much potential you possess. You must understand the source from which you came. You and I possess all the qualities and nature of our source and are capable of manifesting these qualities. We also possess an eternal spirit just like our source. We will live forever, not because he allows us to, but because it's our nature. But where you spend your forever is determined by you. A manufacturer's product must remain related to its source in order to maintain its supply with genuine parts an authorized service. It is this relationship that the manufacturing company calls the warranty or guarantee agreement. In this, the product has to be subjected to the conditions, specifications, operational standards set by the manufacturer. If he is to take responsibility for the maximum performance, maintenance, and servicing of the product. Violation of the manufacturer's conditions and standards cancels the warranty or guarantee relationship and places the product at the mercy of unauthorized dealers. We've been letting unauthorized dealers teach us the word of the Most High God. If they are not teaching the Torah, they are unauthorized. Oh Lord, oh Lord, the same relationship exists between the Most High and man. The most highs guarantees the maximum performance of our potential if we remain related to him and submitted to the conditions, specifications, and standards set by him. I'm going to say that again. The most high guarantees the Torah's teachings and instructions are the maximum performance of your potential if we remain related to him and submit to the teachings and instructions, the commandments, the precepts, the oracles, the covenant. Yeah. These are the conditions and specifications and standards set by him. A personal relationship with our creator is necessary, is a necessary key to releasing of our full potential. Key number two. Hallelujah and bless your day. Key number two. You must understand how the product was designed to function. What you say? You must understand how the product was designed to function. Every manufacturer designs, develop, and produces his product to function in a specific manner. Automobile manufacturers design their products to function with gasoline, spark plugs, batteries, pistols, oil, water, etc. No matter what you do, if you do not supply the elements required for the operational function of the product, it will not perform and maximize its potential. The most high created man in the Torah, 
in the garden. A walk along, talk along relationship. He designed man and created him to function like he does. You and I were created to function by faith in love, obedience in love. Without faith or in Hebrew obedience, it is impossible to please the most high God. These are the rules on which we run. What you say? The 613 principles are the fuels on which we run. That which is not of faith, obedience is sin for us. The, the just live, operate by faith, obedience. What you say? The just live, operate by faith, obedience. Our potential cannot be released without obedience and love. Fear and hatred cause a short circuit of our potential. Hallelujah. Key number three. Come on, most high God. Out of 613 keys, you're giving out 10 keys to 5 a.m. prayer live this morning. Yeah. Key number three. You must know your purpose. Every product exists for a specific purpose. That reason is the original intent of its existence. The purpose for which the manufacturer made it. This is an essential key because the purpose for which something was made determines its design, nature, and potential. The Most High created you and gave you birth for a purpose. Hallelujah. Whatever that purpose is, you possess the potential to fulfill it. No matter how big the dream, the Most High gave you your potential is equal to the assignment. What you say? No matter how big the dream, the most high gave you your potential is equal to the assignment. Purpose gives birth to responsibility. Say it again. Purpose gives birth to responsibility and responsibility makes demands on your potential. Say it again, most high. Purpose gives birth to responsibility and responsibility makes demands on potential. Key number four, you must understand your resources, which is the Torah. What you say? You must understand your resources. All manufacturers provide access to the necessary resources for the proper maintenance, substance, and operation of their product. The Most High provided his Torah for the resources, operation, and everything that the product needs. Resources and provisions are to help sustain the product while its potential is being maximized. Come on, Torah! Hallelujah! You ain't keeping no Torah! The Torah is keeping you! Resources and provisions are to help sustain the product while its potential is being maximized. The Most High in His great wisdom provided for the human beings tremendous material and physical resources to sustain and maintain us as we proceed in realizing, developing, and maximizing our potential. The Torah resources were created to live on and with but never for we are never to worship the resources nor are we to become controlled by them idolatry and substance and drug abuse are violations of the manufacturer's specifications and will lead to the destruction of potential key number five you must have the right environment. You better say it again, Mosai. You must have the right environment. Environment consists of the conditions that have a direct or indirect effect on the performance, function, and development of a thing. Yeah. These conditions can be internal or external. Every product. Every manufacturer specifies the proper conditions under which he guarantees the maximum performance of the potential of the product. 
and the manual, the manufacturer will cautious violations of that specified environment for maximum performance. The right environment is the ideal conditions needed for maximization of the true potential. The most high created everything to flourish within a specific environment. Plants and animals and fish all need a specific environment in order to live. Potential is nullified, aborted, and destroyed when the environment is violated or disrupted. You better come on, Most High. This is also true of man. The Most High designed man to function in the garden, his presence, and relationship with him, free from sin and a daily communion with his spirit. Man's potential needs this positive environment of fellowship, relationship, and love, and challenge in order to be maximized. You can never be all you can be in other environments. The fall of man contaminated his environment and poisoned the atmosphere of our potential. It produced abnormal behavior and the malfunction of the human factor. The key to releasing your true potential is the restoration of the most high original environment. Yeshua came to restore us to the Father. He sent the Holy Spirit to restore our internal environment. Key number six, you must work out your potential. Say it again. You must work out your potential. Potential is dormant ability. Potential is dormant ability. But ability is useless until it is given responsibility. given responsibility. When the Most High created man, he planted in him the potential to multiply and fill the earth and subdue, dominate, and rule the earth and everything in it. Man's potential was predetermined by this purpose. He had inside him all the potential necessary to fulfill the assignment. I'm going to say that again. I'm talking to leadership now. 
You are given assignments. And half the time, oh Lord, you give excuses. Why you can't keep the assignment? Or why you have, oh I'm going to say yes, keep the assignment. But now I know, with understanding your potential, if he has given you the assignment, you have it on the inside of you to walk in the assignment. You have perseverance. You have endurance. It's on the inside of you. You're making the decision to make the assignment hard <laughs> because the assignment requires maybe for you to do something different. Oh, we done got serious this morning. Because this is a leadership conference. And we give excuses. And it's my fault too, because I let folks give excuses. And I feed it to your excuses. But no more. You ain't got no excuse. Because if he have given you this assignment, built in you is the potential. Now you better start acting like it. Who oh, Lord. Man's potential was predetermined by this purpose. He had inside him all the potential necessary to fulfill the assignment. Stop giving folks excuses, Dr. J. But he was not aware of his potential. Even as you may not be aware of what you can do. Therefore, the first thing the Most High gave man was not a wife, but work. Oh, you better come on, Holy Ghost. Therefore, the first thing the Most High gave the man was not a wife, but work. Genesis chapter 2, verse 15. Oh, the word is used for correction, Dr. J. I know you want to take that thing into your own hand. I got you. He made demands on the potential of a man's mind by commanding him to name the animals and stimulated the potential of his body by commanding him to cultivate the garden. Come on, Most High God! The Most High gave man insight into the potential of his spirit by commanding him to dominate the whole earth for the Most High. You've been given assignments. And the most I said, just sit back and watch. <laughs> just sit back and watch. Work is a major key to releasing your potential. What you say, Mosa? Say it again. Work is a major key to releasing your potential. Potential, it must be what? Potential, it must be what? Potential must be exercised and demands made on it. Ooh, every demand I make on you, ooh, Lord, come almost high. Otherwise, it will remain potential. Oh, you got the potential to do this and the potential to do that and the potential to do this. But guess what? All the demands and the responsibility, you're not exercising it. Let's get real now. Let's get 100. Let's do that. Potential must be exercised and demands made on it. Otherwise, it will remain potential. Claiming a promise does not make it happen. You better say it again. Claiming a promise does not make it happen. You must apply the principle of work. Oh, I see why you say this. Until today, you must apply the principle of work. The land was promised to Abraham, but he had to walk it out to possess it. Oh Lord. The land was promised to Abraham, but he had to walk it out to possess it. Good ideas do not bring success. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Ooh, you tearing up this house right now, and I'm so happy about it. Tear it up, Most High. Tear it up. Good ideas do not bring success. Good hard work does. Oh, Lord. I ain't got to 
say nothing. Good hard work does to release your true potential. You must be willing to work. Period. A thousand explanation points behind it. Emphasis added, Dr. J. Key number seven. You must cultivate your potential. Potential is like a seed. Come on, most high God. I can't believe him. <coughs> Y'all listen to this seven times today, and I mean it too. I don't care if you got to sleep on it, what you got to do. Y'all listen to this seven times today. I'm serious. This is for leadership. Key number seven. Oh, you must cultivate your potential. Potential is like a seed. It is buried ability and hidden power that needed to be cultivated. Oh, Lord. You must feed your potential. The fertilizer of good positive company. Give it the environment of encouragement. Pour out the water of the word of the most high and bathe it in the sunshine of 5 a.m. prayer. What'd you say? All right. You must feed your potential. The fertilizer of good positive company. Give it the environment of encouragement. Pour out the water of the word of the most high and bathe it in the sunshine. Oh, personal prayer. Oh, Lord, this is so good. Read materials that will stimulate your obedience and nourish your dreams. Oh, Lord, how many more keys? <laughs> Key number eight. Go on, Dr. J. Go on, girl. Thank you for helping me out. Because you know my little heart sometimes just be like, girl, they go get it right one time. They go get it right. They go do it. He said, no, stop playing. You better put a demand on it. You better put a demand on it. Okay. I got it. You got it? <laughs> I'm talking to you. You got it? <laughs> Type amen in the comments. <laughs> Is used for correction. Whoop a most high. Whoop whoop. <laughs> Beat him down. Okay. <clears throat> okay. I'm sorry. I'm not. I'm not enjoying the beating. Okay. Key number eight. You must guard your potential. It is tragic when a tree dies and a seed, or a man dies and a boy. Ooh. <clears throat> it is tragic. When a tree dies in a seed or a man or a woman dies in a boy or a girl. It is sad when what could have been becomes what should have been. With all the wealth of your potential, you must be careful to guard and protect it. The command to protect was among the first commands the most high God gave to Adam. The Bible calls your potential a treasure in earthen vessels. I ain't seen nobody type in the comments. <laughs> you must guard your vision and dreams from sin, discouragement, procrastination, failures, opinions, distractions, tradition, and compromise. Hi, Satan is after your potential. Be on guard. Come on, get me out of here, Most High. You done got me in trouble. Key number nine. <laughs> You must share your potential. I'm trying to. I'm trying to. So hard. You must share your potential. The Most High created the entire heavens and earth with the potential principle, which can only be fulfilled when it's shared. Nature abounds, abounds with this truth. Nature abounds with this truth. The sun does not exist for itself. Plants release oxygen for us and we give carbon dioxide to the plants. The bees receive nectar as it pollinates the flowers. No potential exists for itself. This is also true of man. True potential and fulfillment in life is not what is accomplished, but who benefits from them. Come on, most high God. I'm a 
y'all gonna fall out this chair. True potential and fulfillment in life is not what is accomplished, but who benefits from them. Your deposit was given to enrich and inspire the lives of others. Remember, the great law is love. I love you. I do. I, I know it seems kind of rough, but I love you. It's key number 10 now. You happy? <laughs> key number 10. You must know and understand the laws of limitation. <laughs> there ain't none. You must know and understand the laws of limitation. Freedom and power are two of the most important elements in our lives. Potential is the essence, oh Lord, of both. Potential is power, but freedom needs law to be enjoyed. And power needs responsibility to be effective. Oh, you do this thing, you do it then. Potential is power. But freedom needs law to be enjoyed. 613 principles of the Torah. And power needs responsibility to be effective. One without the other produces what? Self-destruction. One without the other produces self-destruction. Every manufacturer establishes laws of limitation for its product. These laws are not given to restrict, but to protect. Not to hinder, but to assist and guarantee the full and maximum performance of potential. Say it again, Torah! These laws are not given to restrict, but to protect. Not to hinder, but to assist and guarantee the full and maximum performance of potential. The Most High has set laws and standards to protect our potential and to secure our success. You better write this thing. These are the 613 principles that he gave us in the first five books of the Bible. Obedience is protection for potential. Come on, Lord. I can't stay in here. Obedience is protection for potential. All of these keys and principles are proven throughout human history to be true. Any violation of these laws limits the release and maximization of your potential. Commit yourself to obeying the manufacturer. Oh, Lord. Then watch your life unfold as you discover the hidden ability that's always been within you. Oh, Lord, help me, Holy Ghost. We ain't no chapter principle. Most I say, God said, uh-uh, that's enough, girl, that's enough. Amen, 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 and amen. Woo! Seven is the number of completion. Y'all better get this thing downloaded. I want this thing playing through this house all day long. Hallelujah. Ooh-wee. What, 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 what was the name of this chapter? Chapter 11 came hard. <laughs> Keys to fulfilling your true potential. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Go on now. Go on now, most high God. Go on now. Ooh, that was a Holy Ghost whoop in April. <laughs> I'm going to be quiet all day. I ain't going to say nothing. I'm going to let the word speak. <laughs> Ooh, Lord, come on. Ooh, Lord. I'm just going to let the word speak.
Because you are a mighty, 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 one and only, a higher, Asha, higher. Oh, you are that you are. I am the great I am. You better come on now. Ooh, so good. Y'all share this video. I don't even, there needs to be a repeat of this. Ooh, y'all share this video. Ooh, this need an encore. I don't know when, I don't know how, maybe to come to the uh, tabernacle on Saturday. But this needs an encore. Wow. Woo! Mm -mm 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 mm That's all I got to say about that. Most high God, I lift up everyone on Facebook Live this morning. The ones that are here now and the ones that will listen later. Just take the correction and get it right. The word is used for correction. And we are all being corrected. And I thank you for your correction from the top all the way down. You are a reward to them that diligently seek you. Bless them. Love on them. Let them see themselves. Let us see ourselves. This is a 365 days of a character check and sometimes... You need to correct us. You said you chastise. You know, what, what father doesn't chasten his son? So as the most high God chastises us. So thank you for a word, for us to be obedient, to be consistent, to be committed. And most of all, just to do it for the love of the most high God. Giving you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. Amen. 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 And amen. So get to the blog spot, get to Facebook, get to YouTube. It will encourage you. Have a supernatural day for him. Yeshua stepped in the fire. Oh, yeah, we got a fourth man in the fire. Hallelujah and glory to his name. Mm -mm 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 -mm. 
I love you, love you, love you. Oh, I love you. You know I love you. Bye now. So good. So, so good.